The BHP Podcast is presented by bowhunterplanet.com. Join the hunt. The BHP Podcast is probably presented by Element Outdoors, Cold Steel Knives, HHA Sports, Grind Life Coffee, Skull Hooker, Scott Archery, and Burris Optics. Hey everyone, this is Tim for Bowhunter Planet. Make sure you check out the new podcast, Respect the Game, wherever you find your podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the Bowhunter Planet Podcast. Myself, Dave Thomas, tonight, along with Jamie, Tim, and Kevin, and uh, our special guest, Ryan Schutz from Bear Archie. Ryan, how are you, man? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So, Ryan, what is new in the world of Bear Archery? I know we've seen some stuff here on our test live show, and uh, we've had a great time reviewing the new bows this year. And, you know, the biggest thing that stood out for me was the, obviously the bows are great, but the crossbows this year are, are amazing. And Kevin and I have been having a lot of fun, like reviewing those bows. And we actually have one we're finishing up the video now, which I'm trying not to tell too many people about. But as it comes out, we get this great thing that, you know, people are seeing this new designs from Bear. You know, obviously it's only been a few years for the crossbow marker for you guys. But in that time frame, I feel like you guys have come a long way. So I guess let's start with what's new at Bear right now. So we have a ton new um, and we're pretty diverse. So, I mean, we have some new stuff in the traditional line in the youth line in the compound line and the crossbow line, but I'll start with the crossbows because it's really exciting, especially um, they were out early enough that you could turkey hunt with them. I turkey hunted uh, with the one that I'd call the intense, which is kind of our price point model and just works so great in a blind. So some of the innovations we did on that is it's very, very narrow. So easy to move in and out of a blind with. Also works really good on any type of like shooting sticks and um, and really anything like that. Also, uh, I even, we didn't get lucky this year, but I tried with my <laughs> eight year old girl, uh, little girl to try to get one. And you know, it makes it really easy for her to be in the blind the crossbow to be in the blind and me to be in the blind um, all at the same time because it gets gets a little tight but when you have something narrow like that um, it worked really really well for us um, so the the not getting the turkey was not not at all the fault of the item <laughs> yeah. it's tough when you have little ones in we, there with you we know how that goes <laughs> yeah this is the bow. It's funny you brought this one up because this is the one we were talking about. And we, me and Kevin loved this bow. It was literally, for the price point of this bow, it is literally a great deal. I mean, the, the different parts of this bow that people are going to see in our video, obviously you guys have a lot of content here as well. Um, but one of the biggest thing, obviously, was the, um, was the finger protection. I mean, just unbelievable size on this bow. Yeah, and if you're going to take, if you're going to take an eight-year-old out and hunt with a crossbow, I think this is, the way to go the safety features on this thing are awesome yeah very very cool yeah, yeah the my, way that, my... that that forearm oh, really helped that forearm really helped her as well too because it's hard sometimes to reach all the way up so she right. was able to grab a hold right there since she's still you know still growing yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's... and like you were saying i mean for for a ground blind or just hunting i'm looking at the stats on this 10 inches wide cock I mean, that's, that's impressive. I mean, there's a lot of crossbows on the market that are much wider than that. And uh, 10 line, inches really yeah. isn't, I mean, that's very maneuverable in a, in a really small con confined space. Yeah. Very cool looking. Yeah. And so this can, is the video that's coming. <laughs> that's <laughs> great. Not to allude to it, but this bow is sick. So that's kind of like, you know, one of our starting price points bows. There's also the intense CD, um, which we just, you know, we take a few features off to get you a really good price point to get into the market. So like at 349 at a retail. Um, so we're pretty big. You're going to hear it a lot. We've did it a lot in our marketing to it, Bear. We're, um, Fred Bear really wanted archery for everyone. So, you know, that's why we have our price points really go from the bottom to the top when you're talking compounds and traditional and we're trying to work that way as well in crossbows so that way everybody can enjoy the outdoors so uh, and we think this one's really packed the constrictors the model of 
above it so you're getting some more speed and it originally was the one I was going to have Lily use because it's got an adjustable stock which I really like um, um, so you can adjust your trigger pull more than anything right but mm -hmm. when we started to shoot she really took to the intense a little better than anticipated so I just stayed with it yeah but yeah, I gotta say great. though, I mean, you and you're talking about price point, and three fifty and four hundred dollars for the intense is is an amazing price point for a crossbow for a company like Bear to come out with. Um, but even the constrictor at six hundred dollars for what you're getting with it, that's still a great price point out there in the market. I mean, you got you got crossbows out there now pushing seventeen, eighteen, over two thousand dollars. Um, for a crossbow so even I mean even that $600 range is, is pretty affordable I think when you look at the uh, the overall marketplace out there yeah you're with that that's very true so and we tried to pack a lot of features in this too like we have a you know, that's our true x knock that we're using on there so it's really a full capture knock um, which helps with when you're getting these narrow type crossbows you really want that to grab at the string so you know we put put some different innovations and things like that to help with that accuracy and both of those bows are very accurate as well pretty fun to shoot so i can't wait to see your video yeah it's gonna be fun we we had a great time filming that video it was really really cool but um so like uh we were playing with this uh, last year we love these little things oh yeah they're yeah. so fun <laughs> <laughs> i brought that up to, i brought that up to hunt camp Three last years. year and uh, we just started popping them off, and it, it was it was just a good time, man. It was a great time to just kind of let loose and have a little bit of fun with those desires. And there's a there was a new one. There's the desire, and then you guys came out with the XL this year, right? Yes. Um, I've I love that you guys brought that up. So that bow has been really really good for us, especially lately. I think as people stay home, you know, with uh, the quarantine and everything that's happening, it's it's just fun, right? Once you I always used to tell people there's certain things that you, you know, shoot a bow or shoot a gun or certain things that just make you smile. You're like, wow, that was very fun to do. This yeah. this little pistol crossbow is one of those things where it's just like, wow, I'll shoot that again. Um, the XL is, it's just a version off of our RD or the original Desire, but you're able to use it with a stock as well. So the back part of that's adjustable, just with a couple screws, you can move that in and out. So you can push it all the way up and still use it with the crossbow and not even have it touch your shoulder or even take that back part off and still be able to cock it. Or of course you can then uh, put it up against your shoulder and use a good solid two hands to even just get more steady. And it's a, it's a lot faster than people think. Oh yeah. You know, that, that, that's what impressed us about it is it's like, okay, 175, are we really going to hit that? And we did. I mean, it, it was, it was pretty impressive to see that thing shoot. That's not something, it's not a toy. Let me put it that way. Yeah. It is, keep it, 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 is, it, it is definitely something that you've got to be careful with. Uh, because it is shooting 175 feet, feet per second. That thing flies the arrow out. Because the bolts aren't long. They're, what, eight inches, I think? I think so. Somewhere around there. Uh, but, the, yeah, Dave, here's Dave the and I had a, Yeah, there's a bolt right there. Yeah, there. oh, yeah, a lot smaller, yeah. So Dave and I had a little bit of a shoot-off uh, with the Desire and the Desire XL. Um, I unfortunately lost. Um, but that just is what Pay it that is. money. I'll talking? give Dave credit for that. But is that, is that the one that Bob shot through into the wall, or is that a different yes. one? Yes. <laughs> no, that was me and Bob shoot out the same night. You hit the wall. That was awesome. Well, when, when I we love were, these bows. When we were testing it, I can tell you we lost some of those bolts and targets right away. Because you're like, oh, I'm man. sure it'll stop it. Yeah, it stops it, and you can't find it at all in some of those bag targets. You definitely got to pay attention to like a – a thicker yeah. foam target it really hits hard it's not a toy but yeah sure for fun. sure yeah i'm trying to find the clip <laughs> i think Bring it's it together right too i gotta say Actually, is, yeah this is, is the moment this is, is the pretty moment simple. oh yeah, yeah yeah this is where he shoots the wall <laughs> <laughs> this is when kevin died oh, gosh. <laughs> you can see him trying to find Look the how he is. So Look how he is he shoots it up above everything <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh my basement. This wow. is user. Every just so everybody knows, that's user error. 
Yeah, yep. complete user. <laughs> definition. Look at my shot. Look at my shot right in the turkey heart. No, no, you, no, you got You got to think. This guy, this guy is a gun guy, right? So he, he, he knows how to sight stuff in. He knows how to hold them. He knows how to shoot, so trigger funny. pull everything. And for him to do that was just, it was absolutely awesome for us to watch that happen. <laughs> I like that you guys are doing the friendly competition there. That's oh, what that thing's perfect so for. Just kind of backyard, having a good time. I feel yeah, like I that, won 10 bucks on this deal. Plus, Yeah, you did. You wall. actually did. I, I paid you 10 bucks on that for sure. Yeah, uh, but yeah like I said, I, I brought it up to, uh, to hunt camp, and it was just cool. We, we took it outside, put up some plywood, you know, just had some fun with it, and uh, it was a good time, man. It was a great way to kind of just let loose for a minute. I like the XL. Like to me, I like to have that little I stock so I can I can aim a little bit better. But I actually hit that hard shot without the with the other one, the regular desire. That's why it was funny, and I and I crushed him on it, and then he still hit the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and we do that RD model that has the red dot, which is nice. But um, yeah, I forgot about I like that. That the open cool. sight quite a bit. Like what yeah, you guys are just simple, there, you know, you know? make yeah. it fun. All right. <clears throat> Let me go back to the uh, website. We can talk about some of the other models. Let's see here. Pause yeah, so this. you mentioned earlier what I what I wanted to really get to and is the uh, the youth bow segment. So you got you got some new stuff there. You were you were saying I I, I would love to get into that for a minute. Yep. So um, there's one of them right there, and then we also have the apprentice as being a new one as well. So valiant and. No, this ain't the one though, right? And then Prentice wear new ones. And um, okay. that's one. So yeah. there's really two of them. One's kind of a, what we tried to do is kind of a, a very young type model. So like that one we list for here is, are you able to hold it with your off bow hand? Um, when, you're, when you're that type, when you're that age, uh, what we really did this year was try to give it more of an adult feel and look. So that looks very close to some of the geometry that we actually use on like our divergent bow, um, which is one of my main line, a um, little bit upper end, end type bows. So definitely make it look more like, you know, mom and dad, dad's type bow. So a little bit more modern is what we were going for with both of those. And, you know, archery, I bet all of us have some custom stuff on our bows for certain colors and feel, right? It's kind of what archery is. So we tried to do a little bit more of that, but what we're really, you know, that way it's easier to step up the bear line, start you with some of those youth bows and then maybe some recreational trad bows and then hopefully into compounds and crossbows or whichever way you like. Yeah, and you guys have some really nice models out there that are kind of grow with you, right? Like you, you have ones that have a really short draw length all the way out to 30, and, and the poundage is, is extremely adjustable as well, correct? We do. So we have some very, very versatile bows. So the Cruiser G2 um, is one of them. And then uh, new this year was one called the Royale, which is pretty fun to talk about. It has a pretty good... Um, it's got it's kind of meant to bridge you into that bigger type bow um some of the bows you're talking about literally go from like seven pounds to 70 pounds from like a 10 inch draw all the way to a 30 inch draw so really any of us on the call could really anybody could shoot some of those bows but the royale is a little bit lighter in your hand and again we tried to the geometry of those bows um match each other pretty well and i'm talking about limb angle and some, some stuff like that um but we also offer that in a bunch of fun colors and even that name you know kind of from um royale kind of play off the battle royale and Fortnite. that if you have kids they probably play i knew it, it. I, love it. <laughs> I, love it. I thought the same thing i'm like this has got to be off royale like battle royale it's got to be um <laughs> Yeah, the, well, the you Cruiser do G2, like, though, is a great bow. The, Kevin shot his first buck with this bow last year, right, Kevin? Was it last year or year before? Two years ago. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. I believe, yeah. So, two. so I love that because, of course, we're hoping that, you know, the Cruiser could get you – I mean, really, anybody can shoot the, the Cruiser G2. I was just talking about my little girl a little minute ago um, – she shoots, she shoots a Cruiser G2. She did shoot the Royale before that. But 
and like I said, I've, I've shot the Cruiser G2 quite a bit. It, it really, it fits anybody. I mean, you don't get the speed of some of the upper end bows and some of the draw cycles and some things like that on, on our upper end bows that, of course, raise the prices as well. But uh, I'll it's, tell you what, though. It still works at, pretty well. At, at 20 yards, I did a complete pass through on a seven point buck, and he only went about 40 yards and dropped. So you, oh, get yeah. plenty, you get plenty of speed. <laughs> yeah. Is this the is this the Woodlands pattern? Um, that's the Fred Bear pattern. Fred Bear pattern. I knew that. I couldn't remember the name of the pattern. This is sick. Beautiful. That so, looks great. And I can give some insight in that as well. So we launched that last year um, and let it go across our bow line. So, and that is very, very close to what he had originally done um, in the 60s and 70s, we were able to find a pretty untouched piece, piece of fabric in our Gainesville factory. And technology is amazing nowadays on scan. You know, back then they didn't have Pantones and everything else that you make everything match perfectly to. So we were able to scan it and get everything really to the original. We put some unique things in there. There's a, the old trad bear just the bear is repeating in the pattern. There used to be yeah, a blotch in there that kind of looked like a, yeah, there used to be a blotch in there that looked like a buffalo. I don't think it was on purpose. We just all thought it looked like a buffalo. So we adjusted a little bit to make it look like a bear. Um, and that pattern's going off very, going very, very well for us. So, and yeah, I know I seen yeah. that pattern. I know we did a bow in that pattern because I remember looking at it thinking, amazing, like the way it looked, the detail. A buddy, of mine, a buddy of mine saw this pattern about uh, two weeks ago, and he mm -hmm. is just, he's like, wow, that's so awesome. Because, you know, anybody that's been around and remembers Fred, Fred Bear, and, you know, a lot of us started out, my first bow was a bear, and, you know, everybody remembers the, that pattern. Yeah, that pattern's sweet, honestly. This is, uh, and the Royale is awesome, too, by the way. I I did it with my son, actually, this video, and it was, he did such a great job with this bow. He, he shoots this bow today because he did such a good job with it. I was just blown away by how easily it fit him and how easy it was for me as a parent to adjust it on my own, and that was a big deal, you know. Having that yeah. capability is a big deal. Well, one of the things that we did on that bow was, uh, just, my computer switched screens on me a little bit, but uh, one of the things we did on that bow was we did add the poundage on that. We we're talking about versatility in the bows. The model we had before would tap out at 45 pounds and we were able to adjust some limbs and change some things to be able to get that bow to get 50 pounds. So it can even live longer with your, more than likely your, your kiddo will outgrow the size, the axle axle of that bow before they outgrow the poundage. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. The one thing I, I mean, <clears throat> personally, the, there's a lot of things I love about bear archery, but one of the biggest things is obviously the history of Fred Bear and all that. That's amazing, right? That part alone. But the other thing is that the versatility and the price points you guys have put in place has really outshined, I think, the industry as a whole. Like when you look at bear archery, there is a bow for everybody. And the price points are not crazy. They're not absurd. They're not the, the most expensive bow you guys have today is the Perception, and that bow is amazing. Like, people like, oh, Bear doesn't make a bow like that. Bull crap. That's what I say. Because the, if, if they haven't shot that bow, they don't understand. That bow is literally – when I think of that bow, I think Bear Archery's engineer said, listen, guys, we can build a bow that's that much money, too, and here it is. If that's what you want, here it is, right? And that bow is unbelievable, unbelievable. And I would say you're very right. And we kind of tried to tell that story in the name, right? Perception. So we get the yeah. perception lots of times that we just, you know, build a very, very great value bow. And we, we do. We try very hard to. Like I said before, that was a very important to Fred. And we're trying to make sure that we um, continue on his legacy. But we can also build the best of the best stuff as well. Um, so the perception is a great bow that it's pretty fun to shoot. A lot of people don't think either that you can hunt with a shoot through riser bow, but it's just pattern. Once you get used to threading your arrow through there, it's just like anything else. 
you you know to not get your broadheads close to the string or anything like that. I know I didn't have any problems this deer season with it. And it's also nice knowing that arrow is in there. So if you spot and stock muleys or anything like that, you're extremely secure. Yeah, that's for and sure. The, one fun thing that we really like to talk about on technology that we launched this year is we came out with that uh, new Echo Cam or EKO Cam, and it's a higher let off cam. We've had lots of people want Bear to to get into the higher let off game, and we think we did a really good job of getting there um, really quickly and giving you something a lot of people don't. So right on that cam, I was actually shooting it earlier today, you can adjust it from from, you know, if you want really high let off, like 90% let off, 85, 80, and 75% let off. So you you can pick. I've always liked higher let off bows myself personally, um, but everybody likes it a little bit, a little bit different. So I have my bow set at 90 right now. I also, one thing that I like that we do on our bows is on the divergent and the status, you can, you know, the bow itself stops with a cable stop, but we also include with all the with those two particular models a a draw or a limb stop. And if you really really want a solid solid back wall, you put that limb stop. And that's currently how I'm shooting the status. And I really like the feel of it with that 90% let off and then that extremely hard back wall. Have you guys shot and tested these as well? Then. Yes. Yeah. They're amazing. <laughs> that, that cam system to me is literally, um, you know, one of the best has ever been made. You guys kick, you guys really hit it out of the park, honestly, when it comes to, to bows. I mean that like th this cam has been in my mind, one of the best ones you guys have ever done. I mean, just, <laughs> and that makes sense to me why the divergent has it and the status, right? That made sense to me then when I saw the cam and I, <clears throat> we started playing with it. And I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Like, in my mind, like everybody's different, like you said, and, and, but for me and for uh, some of the guys on our team, comfort is number one. So yeah. I, I've always I put agree. comfort over speed and people want to say all this stuff about speed, but the truth is, in my opinion, 300 feet per second is an amazing number with a hunting rig and a hunting arrow. And, you know, most of the bows are getting that, you know, and, and if you can get that with having this comfort luxury of 90% and, you know, shooting 60 pounds or something crazy, right? <clears throat> that is amazing to me. So all in all, I think it's it's genius for you guys to have done that, and I also think it really goes to show the engineering capabilities of Bear Archery just to be able to have that option for you as a consumer to buy a bow, to go in and be able to have that adjustment right at your fingertips. I mean, come on. Like, that's <laughs> that doesn't work that way, people. I'm telling you. Like, Matt, yeah. you would never be able to do that. You have to buy a bow, a specific brand, and you have to, you know, to get a specific let off, you'd have to purchase a specific brand, and that cam is not changing again from that point yeah we, we and we've talked about bear for a long time on on our shows and you know one one of the things is that we we've come to realize is that you guys are always upping your game and what you're doing you guys have been around for a really long time i think we've seen we've been around what almost 11 years now and we've seen you know the last five six seven years you guys have really stepped up the game in regards to the bows that you're putting out there, but not, not just the technology side of it, the price points that you guys are hitting for people to really get that bow and have it be affordable is, is I think bar none to like what we see elsewhere in the industry. Yeah, no, I agree, Tim, because the thing is, is that with bear, the price point hasn't changed a lot. And I feel like the technology has starting back from the carnage, right? You go back way, years back, yeah. And the design started getting aggressive and like really sick looking. And it was really cool. I'm like, oh my God, what is Bear doing? I mean, we've been doing, we've been covering every bow in the industry and Bear is just like literally coming out, you know, guns ablaze and let's do this. You know, we're Bear Archer. We're going to do it. That's the feeling I got. And sure enough, all the way up to this point. And not only did you guys do that, but you also held to a price points that in my opinion, everybody else is past that. They're hundreds of yeah. dollars more now you know, like a standard bow is just 12, 1300 bucks standard, you know? I mean, so I feel like bears, the only one who has been saying, Nope, you know, we're going to hold to this. We're going to design something that's affordable that people can go into the store and get. And, and guess what? We're also going to offer you guys other options. So if you can't afford the best number one bow, we're going to do the divergent and we're going to do the, the cruiser. I mean, there's options that people can go in and buy. I mean, I'm assuming that was a strategy you guys put in place on purpose. 
It was, there was a lot of talk on that with, you know, when you're designing a new cam, there's a lot of engineering and work that goes into that, right? And you you value it very, very high. So we have our Legend Series bows, which are kind of our best of the best on the compound side, which we knew that cam was going to go into that. And as we got to developing, it only made sense that it also went into our main line of bows. Um, so to your point, you could be able to get into a bow at like that 699 Divergent EKO price point, as well as the status, which is right around that $1,000 price point. And there's a lot of differences in the risers and everything else that we do on those, those two particular bows. But if you wanted to get the, we really see the EKO cam as another way to customize the bow to fit you is how we look at it. So all bows, of course, you can adjust your draw length and your draw weight. And now we've just given you the option to adjust your let off as well. Uh, we feel deeply that comfort is probably one of the most important things in the shot. And when you're hunting more than anything and to try it at 75 and if you don't like it, then try it at 80 or 85 and really feel where it's comfortable for you. That's what we want the end user to be able to do. Yeah. So I wanted to change the topic just a little bit because I what what I I've heard more and more over the last probably two or three years is traditional archery. There's a lot of people from from at least what I've heard getting back into the traditional archery side of things, and you guys have been a staple through that through that side from back from whenever I can remember. How has that actually been going? Is my perception right in that? And have you seen more people getting back into traditional? Um, we have, we've, we've, I kind of like to think of it as three different ways to do archery. Um, so, you know, we're great if you want to do crossbows, we're great if you want to do compound, and uh, obviously we're great if you want to do traditional. And I think everybody at different times in their lives wants that different type of, uh, really that different type of challenge. Um, I'm one of those. I'm lucky enough to be able to, you know, work with all our bows, but I, I can tell you this year in the turkey blind, I mean, there was multiple times where I carried my compound and my crossbow because I was convinced in my mind I was going to shoot a double on one of these trips um, and I was going to do it with two different bows. Um, and I actually was lucky enough. I shot a turkey came in, got one with the crossbow and then about 10, 15 minutes later, you know, it happens sometimes. Another Tom came in and I was able to get him with the compound bow. And in uh -huh. my perfect mind, I would be able to do that with the traditional bow. And I, traditional is super fun, but that's a, um, I need some more confidence. I won't lie to anybody there. I did chase him a little bit with it, but I love the idea of people being able to hunt with all three of them so i think there's a lot i think you're you're right there's a lot more of people wanting to do traditional and as of the last few months there's a lot more time and traditional just traditional demands time to get very efficient at it where um we want you to practice with all the bows best you can but you know there's a lot of engineering that goes in those compound bows and crossbows once you get those dialed in and kind of feel with your form that they can do a lot for you. Now you still need to practice with them, but traditional is not that way. You need to practice, or at least for me, it doesn't naturally yeah. come that no, way. No, and that's a great point. And and I would love to. I would love to be able to shoot with traditional, but you're right. I don't have time to practice it. That's I. I, I for if you don't know, I'm I'm a crossbow guy, and I'm a crossbow guy by nature because I stay busy during the week. My job is pretty. My day job is pretty intense in regards to the amount of time that it has. So for me to go out there and grab a crossbow and be able to just pick it up sight it in, have it ready to go is a really huge benefit to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, yep. I think it's genius. I, 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 you know, traditional to me is like a big deal. And I agree with Tim's statement um, that, you know, have that, but I use crossbow as a different method. So for me, um, I would love to do traditional, but I just I can't, I don't, I don't feel like I hunt a place that I see enough deer to where I feel like I would have no problem like launching a traditional bow arrow at a deer, but that's just me. But yeah, um, I want to do a spot and stalk turkey with a traditional. That's what I want. Good luck with that. That's um, on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and it's pretty rough with the compound. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, dude, that'd be even worse. I think a dough would be easier. I think if you just got in a spot that you, you know, you could make sure a dough was coming in, it'd probably be easier, honestly. Yeah. Um, I see Bob. I see Bob's out here. Bob shoots a lot of traditional. Bob, have you ever taken yeah. an animal with one? So Bob's mic's muted, and this is going to take Bob. 10 minutes for him, for him to unmute Hold his on. mic. I got this story, guys. I had to mute it because you just came on, and he was trying to undo his stuff. All right, Bob, you're good. And, uh, nah. I hit him. mute. Oh, there, there you go, Bob. There you go. Sorry, go ahead. No, I've never harvested an animal with the traditional bow. I do a lot of 3D. Uh, You're good with it, man. You are I was going to really say, if anybody could do it, Bob could do it. Yeah, Bob can do it, for sure. It, it is, like he was saying, it does take a lot of practice, you know, and it's totally different than shooting a compound bow. It, it, I find it more fun to shoot the traditional bow because it goes back to the, the way that I, I learned how to shoot when I was a kid. And a lot of it has to do with instinctive shooting. You know, when you get confident with a traditional bow, uh, a recurve, a long bow, stick bow, any, any, any type of bow in, in that, that lineup, it, it helps to have the confidence. It, that's a big part of it is the confidence. And of course, you're not gonna go out and you're not gonna shoot anything, at, you know, 50, 60 yards with traditional setup. My, my, my basic limit is 20, 25 yards, 30 yards tops with traditional. I think that's what, I think that's, that should be the challenge for you and Kevin this year, Kevin, you should help Bob get a deer with a traditional on video. That would yeah. be sick. That yeah, would be. If anybody can hit it, it's going to be Bob. I can tell you right now. <laughs> Kevin, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Not going to happen. Great idea, maybe, though. Maybe I'll be the one to shoot it. Maybe I'll do it. Listen, I don't know. I have no. I have full confidence in Bob. I watch Bob do thumping, stumping, whatever you call it, twenty yards every time. Hit the middle of the, yeah. middle of the thing. So I have no doubt in my mind, Bob will make the shot count. But we just got to get him in position. That's all. So um, all right, I'm going to shift gears. I'm gonna I shift would gears. say we did ahead, want something ahead, very exciting on the traditional side and Bob might not already know about it, but um, our takedown is one of the, you know, it's the iconic bow that Fred's in most of the pitchers with. Um, so this year was the 50th anniversary of it. So at the beginning of this year, actually just after ATA, we launched the 50th anniversary takedown riser. Um, and we do have information on our website and stuff for it. So uh, it's not just our, we didn't just take the old traditional riser and put 50th anniversary on it. We actually took the original handle mold, um, which oh, is just cool. a little bit different than what we did before. And those, uh, I, like I said, I dabble in traditional. I very, very much like to do it, but it gives you a complete different grip. And uh, that's went over very, very well for us this year. And it's the 50th. So it's, you know, we're only making it available this year. Uh, so, Bob, uh, pull out your checkbook. I, I you, did, you know, I, I did shoot an event where one of the dealers was there, and he did have that bow. And it, it, it was a sweet-looking bow. You know, beautiful, beautiful job on the bow. Thank you. Pull out your checkbook, Bob. We'll get that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I want to shift That could be the one you take the deer with. Yeah, maybe. I like I my ship deer grizzly. My grizzly does the job. A grizzly is a great bow. Yeah. It's the workhorse yeah, of the line. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to um, shift gears to Trophy Ridge. So let's talk a little bit about the accessories, Ryan. So I know you guys, you know, you work with, you have, I shouldn't say you work with, you guys own a lot of different companies in this industry. Um, Trophy Ridge, I mean, man, this, <laughs> this new rest you guys are working with here, the Whisker Biscuit uh, VMAX Arrow Rest. So what's the deal with this thing? This thing is looks awesome. I mean, it really looks really good. So what we try it's it's hard to play off the whisker biscuit, right? The whisker biscuit's almost like the Kleenex of the industry yeah. when it comes yeah. to um capture rests. It really is. Everybody's got one. Um 
So what we tried to do, and there's a lot of engineering that was involved in this, is give you all the benefits of what the Whisper Biscuit could do, you know, with the full capture. You didn't, have, once you put your arrow in that circle, you just kind of forgot about it, worried about the shot and everything else that was happening. The V Biscuit gives you all that same comfort, but the way that that sits in there, there's even less friction on the arrow. So as a, you know, as you're drawing, there's less contact also because, um, you know, it was a half U before. Now it's a triangle or a V is what we used it, what we called it, called it. And uh, it just helped you. Uh, we've seen a lot of benefits, especially with like some, um, and then of testing, you know, how does it hold up with the speed and everything like that. So uh, it's, it's definitely elevated the whisker biscuit. If you like to do a whisker biscuit or add one, this is worth the upgrade. This guy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this guy too. Whisker biscuit's my favorite, man. It's like the easiest, the best, most reliable rest I've ever used. Oh, you got a you got a fourteen hundred dollar bowl. What kind of site? What kind of rest you put on there? Whisker biscuit. Yeah, no doubt about it's it. It's a it's a favorite bowl. It's a favorite rest for uh Test lab, that's for sure. Oh, that's oh, yeah. what I was telling Ryan earlier. I said, you know, Jack always sends us some whiskers just so you know, because we use the crap out of yeah, this. Yeah, they're on every video. <laughs> it's so easy to put on and set up for us. I mean, literally, it's the fastest process we have. Plus, to be honest, like, I, I hunt with a lot of different bows, and, I, you know, this is my go-to. Like, I put this on every bow as I'm setting it up and shooting yeah. and dialing in, and to be honest, I, you know, I find it extremely easy to use. And that's why I was interested in the new one to see, to understand yeah. what's going to happen with this one. Uh, but, you know, the original is obviously no joke. I mean, it's been so reliable. I've shot deer. I put this, I put this rest on a bow, like, let's say right now, and then tomorrow I went and shot a deer. I mean, that's literally yeah. how amazing to me this rest has been over the years. Well, I love how you said you, it's kind of the go-to because a lot of us, you know, do some bow tacking and stuff when you're putting together bows. And um, if I have a problem with a bow, like usually, and it's not with a whisker biscuit, somebody wanted to drop away or something, usually it's the first thing I change. I feel I just trust it so much to to get make sure everything else is tuned with the cams and all the other things. So it's definitely a staple. I've been shooting... Um, well, quite a few of these. I've shoot the VMAX quite a bit. I like the adjustability, the mic, you know, we we're just talking. I like to be able to micro tune and adjust and shoot through paper. So mm -hmm. that allows you to do that pretty, pretty easily. So what's the, um, I guess the question I have is um, what is the, um, so a lot of people will make comments to us when we use these for speed tests. They'll say, oh, you're going to lose feet per second because of that. What do you guys, what's your guys' comment on that, I guess? Is, is, is it a, will you lose anything? Is it a couple feet per second? Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? If we see anything, it's a couple feet per second. But, you know, like most things, it's not as simple as, yeah, you're going to lose um, two to three feet per second. It depends on the arrow you're going to use. Are you using, you know, uh, I would say like a metal, like a full metal jacket or carbon, all that matters. Also the veins that you're going to use, use matter. I mean, all that as it goes to, um, so you usually don't, um, we'll see too much. And then as, I mean, I, I, I do work with all our engineers, we design bows. <laughs> We're very picky on speed and stuff. And I can tell you, there's a lot of other things people do to their bows to lose speed than the rest without yeah, even knowing, good. right? Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, that's what's good. So what else is going on at Trophy Ridge? Anything else you want to talk about? Um, the, the stabilizers are very exciting to us, uh, we think. So Hitman, or Hitman oh, yeah. stabilizers this or something cool. that we just introduced. Yeah, um, that was interesting looking. This is the one we did a video on. Kevin did it, remember? It's, uh, it comes right off, like literally pops off. It's amazing. That's awesome. awesome. So, and I love that you hit on the quick disconnect because, um, so it comes right, the value on these things are amazing is what I, so that's what you get for. So of course you can pick your length. So um, whether you're talking of perception, I like to shoot a 12 inch on my perception, but 
um, everybody has their preference, but for that price, you're getting a quick di uh, quick disconnect on there that you can see right um, at the end of that stabilizer. So one twist and it comes off the bow, but your connection by device stays on the bow. Plus you're getting weights that come with that bow so you can, or bow with that stabilizer so you can customize it at the end. Plus you get rings that customize the color and you get a wrist sling. I mean, the how this thing compares, and of course it's, you know, it's carbon and all the other great things that it does, you know, stabilizes the shot. I'm kind of excited about all the other features, but it's a great <laughs> stabilizer as well. We've, I, you're not the first one to talk about though. We've other people have talked about this rest. I'm sorry, this stabilizer and have brought it up over the years. Or I shouldn't say years last year. People in our, our, actually, I'm just, I feel like this just came up Tim, the other day in one of our podcasts. Some guy was, it did. Some yeah, guy yeah, yeah. We, we were talking about the other the day. Video. Yeah, I think I pulled up the video. I was gonna say before we went today, I just want to say the Divergent was one of my favorite bows this year. Uh, the EKO one, sick, sick bow, and um, I love the size of this bow and the price. Everything about this bow to me is like literally an amazing, amazing machine. But um, all right, sorry, <laughs> I was gonna put in here. No, nope, you can talk about up. the bows all you want. Oh, that thing. <laughs> Yeah, man, that thing was great. Yeah, I remember this because this, this is what Kevin said it off. It was so easy. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, look at this. It's just incredible how fast. I was like, this is, yeah, that's, you're not uh, going to fall. It's <laughs> so nice to be able to get it in and out of your bow case. Yeah, right. oh, for sure. especially if you like those longer lengths like yeah. you know a six inch is going to fit in most bow cases pretty easily but like i was just saying there's certain bows i like to use a 12 inch or and then even um that quick we do that quick disconnect on those kits as well so we do a kit so you can just buy like if you wanted a six inch and an eight inch so you could have an offset but what we do that a lot of other um, competitors don't is we give you two brackets then so you can quick disconnect the front or the back um, so you can easily transport it either way because once you start to use those offsets it's a little harder to get into the case. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah amazing. And then the only other thing I would really maybe two other things but that I like to talk about on Trophy Ridge and I'm I'd imagine you guys have done a video on them, but our quivers with the lights on them, yes. we always get, <laughs> yes. we Kevin's still get, a, there you go. We still get a lot of comments on, oh, I didn't know you did a quiver with the lights on it. Like, yeah, it, we're the, the yes, we do things. for years. Yeah, it's the smallest things, but yeah, for sure. I mean, that that's one of the coolest things about them. For, absolutely. I tell you what, I, I use it coming out of the, when I come out at night, instead of using a flashlight, I use my quiver light. So we hear that a lot. I'm a, I'm a big avid turkey hunter. And if you're going to hunt early in a blind, it makes it so nice. Uh, lots of times in the blind, I'll just turn the underhood, that one, yep. to give me enough so I can, you know, see where my hands are moving and get an arrow out and on and everything. And, you know, you're in the blind, so you're trying to be dark as possible. And lots of times we set yeah. up, you know, 50 yards away I from the I love it it's green, too. That's awesome. I think, it was, I, think that really, I think that really highlights your guys' thought process, though, is that it really is the little things that really puts you guys above a lot of a lot of other stuff that we see in the market. It's it, having a light in your quiver. Like, how many times have I clicked the flashlight on to be able to look and see? Because I run a quiver, and I'll have maybe one or two different broadheads in it, right? And so I got to click my flashlight on to see which one am I pulling out. You know, it's, it's the stupid stuff like that, that like this solves that issue for me. Yeah, this is incredible. In fact, just look at it, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> it looks awesome. Yeah, it does. This is like yeah, seriously one of the coolest looking quivers cool. ever yeah. made. And it's that's one of the, so awesome. we love the look and the bracket that you can see on there as well is it really allows you to get it. You can, I can, you can get it so close to your bow that your arrows can touch touch your rest depending on wow. your setup so of course i'm shooting bear so um i have it so close on my status eko at the moment that i had to move it off there a little bit so you can get it really tight up onto the bow which is the you know everybody has their preference uh the other thing i love that you comment on the look we made those lights look so integrated and sleek that's why i wanted to bring it up because a lot of people don't know they're there because we didn't make it bulky or noticeable. Right. Yeah. Even the little loop to hang it, like when I get yeah. out of my tree stand, 
I, I got a hook up there and I hang that thing, you know, a lot of times with other quivers, you're looking for, okay, where do I hook this thing to, you know, you know, but that thing is great. Yeah, it's then, really cool, man. Really cool. And the but other don't... feature, go ahead. No, go ahead. no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your so the other, The other feature that we kind of have on Trophy Ridge that's a little bit like that is just our React technology line of sights, which I know you guys have talked about them before. Oh, yeah. But it's one of those features, it's great when you're sighting in a bow. We were talking a little bit about how fast crossbows can set up, right? That's yeah. what I love about the React sights is that it allows you to set up a bow extremely fast, especially if you, you have some experience. But with the, a five pin React Pro, which is just kind of a simple sight, five pins, um, it allows you to quickly set up if you set your our React technology, you sight in at 20 yards, and then you, then you, what you would do is then it starts to gang adjust the pins at 30 yards. And then once you have your 20 yard and 30 yard pin adjusted, your 40, 50, 60 automatically adjust to the speed of the bow and are mathematically in the right spot. So then all you have to do is shoot at 40 to see that everything's working right. So it allows you to sight in your bow from you know 20 to 60 um, in fractions of the time that you would a traditional sight where you got to do your 20 yard pin, your 30, your 40, your 50. Yeah, I, I tell oh. people about that all the time. I've done it probably three, four times. It's so easy and so quick. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, you know, quick, quick question. When it comes to engineering and all the stuff you guys work on as far as the thing about it that's not complicated, but seems complicated, right, is that you have bear archery, you got bear crossbows, you got um, trophy ridge, Fletcher archery, rocket, sick broadheads, Cajun archery. So when we look at all those brands, is that all under one house, the engineering, or are these some of these separate? Um, nope. Um, we, it, it's all under one house and it's worked really, really well for us. We have some great engineers, great end users. Um, so they all kind of feed off each other. And, you know, some of the things we've talked about, you know, you don't really realize how great it is to have a light in your quiver unless you're hunting and you're like, man, I can't tell what broadhead I'm pulling out of my quiver. Or um, was that, you know, if it's an expandable, I can tell you one of the things I use it for a lot is, you know, we all have walks in sometimes and did my expandable open or did it not? Right. And that quick right. light tells you that. So you never have to second guess it. Um, so first you have to come up with the idea and then not just coming up with it. Then the engineers are like, well, yeah, you can't just throw any light in there. It's got to be a light deer can't see, which is why we did green. Yeah. And you want something that's, you don't want a heavy battery in there, but you want something that's going to last a while in case you leave it on. I mean, there's a, there's a there's a lot of problem solving in almost everything we do and we have great so engineers. Do you find that. yourself using now this is a hard question, but do you find yourself using rocket or sick? <laughs> Me myself? Yeah. I, I like sick a lot. So I use sick, but I like a big large cutting diameter. Um so rocket has great broadheads too. Um but I I use the Turkey, it's really, really good. I like the offset blade. I also do quite a bit of spot and stock. So uh, I really like what we've done on SK2 where you can quickly look and see if, you know, I've never had a clip come open. So mm -hmm. I'm a little superstitious. So hopefully that doesn't change anything. In the future. <laughs> right, right, um, right, right. So as you're spotting and stocking, you know that it's going to, it's going to be there and it's very visible hence the red so you can look and know that that thing is closed and then um it's always nice to be able to have something really sleek and um i'm a big believer in paper tuning so uh sick just paper tunes and flies so well for me yeah that's cool yeah they're both great that's why i asked it just gotta be hard when you work there and you have both options right at your fingertips um so i want to end on one thing real quick here is cajun archery because now is such a great but time it, to go out bow fishing right and cajun has been a staple in the bow fishing market so i guess what can you tell us about cajun right now like what do you guys got going or what can someone go buy right now to get themselves outside and, and and trying to shoot some carp um so on cajun Obviously, we uh, we offer straight packages, so all you have to do is go and you could buy um, one of the newer ones we offer is called the Shore Runner, and it comes complete, ready to go. So you would get an arrow, point, uh, reel, the bow, so literally you can buy the one item and 
go out go out fishing, bow fishing right off the bat. So that's always a great option. Um, we offer that with our our bottle reel. We also offer a kit with with uh, your normal like spin cast type reel. So that way you could whatever your preference. I like I like the bottle reel, but when you're getting into some of those bigger fish, you know. Uh, the spin cast option is is great and then I, we also offer we talked about some traditional stuff so like the fish stick fish stick pro so we offer that traditional side what we also offer to in Cajun that I like is we, we want you to bow fish no matter what like just go out bow fish have fun so we sell all the reels separately and everything like that. Um, I'm sure we all remember it used to, didn't seem that long ago, 10, 15 years, you didn't see a lot of bows specifically made for bow fishing with the continuous draw like we do on ours and um, made for comfort and to shoot fast. So you just always used to buy a reel or something and put on your old bow or bow from a couple years ago. We still offer all those options if someone wants to to do something that way. Even like we were talking like on the Cruiser G2 in my bear line, there's a mod mod that comes with that bow that can turn that bow. Bow into a continuous draw. So a fishing reel and rest on there, you could turn that into a bow fishing bow. I just want the shirt. These are great. <laughs> we appreciate that. We think <laughs> they look cool. cool. So cool. I want now I want to wear a shirt and go bow fishing. That's what I want to do. Let's do it. <laughs> this sounds fun. Oh it's, my it'd be it's it's really good social distancing right now. Yeah, this is amazing. So fun. All right, Ryan. Thanks so much for joining us on the BHP podcast. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. And you know, there's so many different brands um with bear you know with trophy ridge bear occasion sick rocket i mean and then also fletcher we didn't even talk about that today but yeah there's so much out there for you guys and it's it's an amazing thing and uh I, you know i'll put some of the links on the uh, below on the video so you guys can go and check them out yourself but i think now is the time especially for occasion to get out and, and yeah. you know try something new you know just try something different and have some fun and, and get yourself outside especially now because let's be honest, there's, there's nothing hunting right now. So you're good. And then honestly, if you, if you guys have not shot a bear at your bow, you're really missing out. If you're, if you're realistically only picking a bow because of a brand, you are missing out dramatically in this sense, especially in crossbow and compound. Um, and so I would just recommend, especially shooting all their bows And uh, you know, like I said, my favorite's a divergent. I think it's an amazing bow, a great price. And um, really can't go wrong with it. I mean, Kevin, would you agree? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't 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 forget too about the youth side of it because oh, getting people into the industry is such a huge thing for us, huge thing for everybody, right? We we have all these talks all the time about how the hunting population is decreasing, and you want to get kids into it. Well, Bear is the brand for that because Bear has a huge line of not only just getting kids into it but bows that can grow up with them over the years. So I think it's, it's just a, such an amazing brand to be able to bring kids into it and really create the tradition, just like Fred Bear wanted. Yeah. Absolutely. So Ryan, thanks, man. Appreciate you joining us and uh, we'll be in touch and we'll still try to get some more stuff, another interview with you guys soon. So it'll be a lot of fun. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for everything. Thanks so much for listening to the Bowhunter Planet podcast online at bowhunterplanet.com with your host, Team BHP. Check us out on Facebook at Bowhunter Planet. We'll catch you next time.